Uh, the characters of play are Mary Chalmers, who is a, a young English girl who has just come over to Canada uh, because her father has been transferred with his company. And uh, then there's uh, uh, Charlie Edwards, who's a young Canadian farm boy, and uh, and it's play is centered around their uh, love story, their friendship, their discovery of each other, and how they fall in love. Now, another character is a historical character. Uh, his name is um, uh, Gordon Flowerdew, Lieutenant Gordon Flowerdew, who was a actual soldier in the First World War, an officer in the Strathcona's Horse. And when Charlie decides to go to war, he becomes, uh, he is um, Charlie's sergeant and then his, his commanding officer. I had learned about uh, the charge at Marai Wood uh, that happened in 1918 uh, during the First World War, a uh, uh, charge by one squadron of Canadian cavalry which turned the tide of the battle and then that battle may have turned the tide of the war in the later parts of the war. And uh, I, that, um, that image of the charge you know, stuck in my head. And I was going to theater school at the time, started writing, and I thought, wouldn't it be neat to see if I could write a play about a cavalry charge? Um, I, I'd always been a fan of Peter Schaefer's play Equus, and that had horses in it. And I thought, what if, what if and I could do a play with, uh, about this World War I story, this remarkable World War I uh, tale. Uh, and then uh, as I started writing it, uh, it started getting bigger and then uh, it started becoming about a relationship um, and the love story started to infuse it and uh, that's kind of how it all came about. What I find fascinating about uh, um, history and, and films and plays and books about history is that um, trying to remember, you know, that these people are not living they're not aware they're living in history. In fact, they aren't living in history. They are living in the, the exact now, as far as um, the history of humanity and the Earth has gone. And so they don't particularly think that riding horses into battle is uh, antiquated. It is, it is the cusp of modernity. Uh, these people are living in a, a present that they don't know uh, how it's gonna turn out. And so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a strange reflection on our own selves that, you know, um, everyone, everyone's living, you know, in the, in the present, uh, the immediate present. We don't know how COVID's going to turn out. We don't know how, uh, our countries, our politics and other things are going to turn out. We're living in it as, as, as it happens. Um, and so you kind of end up having a lot more compassion, you know, and, um, interest for these people that live in different times. They're stuck in the circumstances in which they're in, and it's the only one they know, and the only one they will know, and they have to play it, play it through. They don't know how the rest of the century worked out the way the way we did. Um, I find it, you know, endlessly kind of fascinating and uh, slightly sad, and also uh, uh, it's a little bit scary sometimes to think, you know, these people are living in World War Two or World War One. Uh, so you know, definitely um, scary times um, but also you know that their that their 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 emotions were real and their their loves and their lives were real to them they had favorite songs they had favorite foods they um, they had loves uh, and trying to uh, connect with I think connecting with that sometimes gives us a better sense of uh, our our own humanity we're, we're kind of all the same throughout time throughout place essentially alone going through a very challenging 